What's going on guys, my name is Brian, also known as that journaling guy, and today I'm here to bring you an in-depth app review of one of my favorite journaling apps that have ever existed. Okay, if you're here for a short answer, yes, this is the best journaling app that exists. All right, you can click off now. But if you're interested in a more in detail look, the pros and cons, what I enjoy, the best features, the best things that I like for each thing, then you're gonna wanna stay for the rest of this video. So if you've been watching my channel for a little bit, you know that I am a big, big advocate for having both an analog system and a, a, a digital system when it comes to like, you know, organizing your to-dos and your life and your feelings and your emotions, I feel like there's a good place where they can meet in the middle and you don't strictly have to stick to just one or the other in order to be your most productive or most self-reflective self, right? There's a place where, there's a place for each and every system, right? So I do use both. Like for example, I use Notion as like my second brain and I use day one journaling as my everyday journaling app. And then I use my Hobonichi and my traveler's notebooks to do my to-do lists and to plan out my, um, my social media and my actual written journaling that I do at least once to twice a week. So I, I use both systems regularly, right? So in my time of looking for the best journaling app, I have used a lot of different apps to try to start a digital journal. I've used things like Notion itself to have a digital journal. I've tried using an app called Journey. I've used Evernote. Evernote was like my first ever digital app that I used for journaling, like dedicated to journaling. And it was crazy. It was crazy. It was great. Um, but I could never get the... I could never get the habit to stick every day, journaling once a day. But in 2022, I've managed to do that both with day one and with my Hobonichi. I've managed to journal every single day for the past, I want to say like month and a half inside of day one and past three months every day in my Hobonichi. So it's been great. We're turning a new leaf. It is a new habit that I've built because now it feels very awkward and weird if I don't journal every day, I feel like I'm missing a core piece of myself. So this app has been really, really helpful with me being able to manage my feelings and manage my thoughts and being able to use it kind of as like daily benchmarks. So when I decide to journal inside of my actual journal, I can go back and look at these and like see what I missed or see uh, what I should include in my actual written journal. So it's pretty great. Now, day one is a phenomenal app. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you straight up, it is a very, very good app with a tons, tons of features and it's been developed and it's still being developed and there are more features that are being added on every month that, that just make it a masterpiece. All right, so I'm gonna walk you guys through the app now and we're gonna go over through some of my favorite features. I'll talk to you how I use each feature and to give you an idea of of what you can expect if you download the app. So as you can see, my day one app is pink and it's actually in my dock because I am using it almost every single day. I really am, it's one of my favorite things. Now clicking over when you open the app, after accessing the biometrics, right? Because it is passcode or face ID locked. So we'll get back to that in a second. On the left side, you're gonna see all of the journals um, that you can start. And so it, you can treat it exactly the way you would treat physical journals. You can dedicate certain journals to certain themes or ideas. That way you're not just stuck to one journal and kind of sticking everything in one place, right? So I made a journal dedicated for this review to kind of show off its feature set and some fun stuff that you could expect when you download the app. So when you click your journal, you're going to be greeted by one of the three things, either a photo, audio, or text option. Um, at the bottom, you have this little eye here, which you can toggle because I have the um, conceal option toggled, which means that if you do open all these, your entries are going to be concealed or you are not going to be visible unless you click on them. So, you know, in case somebody does get inside of your day one like app or you're showing someone, for example, this, they're not going to be able to like read your entries over your shoulder or they're not unless they click on it with your express permission, right? You're going to see the number of entries in this journal, the amount of media that you have included, the amount of days 
um, that you've been journaling and your total streak. So in order to maintain a streak, you need to be journaling every single day. And it's like a Snapchat streak, which by the way, has been one of the most helpful features for me to de develop this habit of journaling every day, because man, it is so satisfying to see a streak of anything. Like I, I know the psychology behind it and it's a little dopamine hit of like if that, keeping that streak alive, honestly. And I let it die once and I'm mad at myself, but keeping that streak alive is really one of the biggest driving factors that I have had for developing the habit of journaling every day. It's pretty great. It's pretty great. I'm not going to lie. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. So if you click on the text, boom, you, nice, simple, quick, responsive journal entry it just opens up right off the bat, right? So I want to do, I want to let you guys know that this app is available on pretty much every platform. You have a web app. It is available on iOS, Android, uh, on your MacBook, and on your iPad. It's available almost everywhere that you can imagine. So you open it up. The first sentence is automatically going to be your title. And then when you click off, you'll automatically switch to a smaller text, Times New Roman. But don't be alarmed because you can pick different fonts for your journal entries. Okay, and we'll get to that in a second. You can pick different fonts here. You can pick any type of like heading formatting that you want. So like a title, a checklist, a to do list, you can indent. Okay, you can pick your sizing, you can have quotes, you can even have code blocks inside of day one. If you're a programmer, okay, or some kind of developer, you can have code blocks inside of the day one app, which is insane. Okay. So after all the formatting options, here are your little clip to add some tags, add an audio, add a camera, like take a picture with your camera or add a picture from your photo library, right? If you're looking to draw or you want to scan a PDF or add a file or just add a template, these are all options that you have too. Now, one of the my favorite parts of this app, okay, and I think it's something that is very um, important if you're going to be using this app often and are going to be inputting a lot of data is the meta tagging. Okay. First of all, the meta tagging is very, very detailed in this app. So just to give you an idea, it gives you, I'm going to have to block that out like my exact address, but it'll give you an address. It'll give you the time that you started the entry and it'll give you the weather. Not only that, it's pretty, pretty in depth. Okay. It's got the moon phase, the altitude, the entry, like the device that you use to create your entry, the entry ID. You can even do a step count, your activity, what music you were listening to. And then obviously your options to export to PDF or HTML or even JSON packages, right? It is insane. It's, it even gives you stats, how many words, how many characters, how many uh, photos you added, how long it's taken you to do this, like how, to, how long it's taken you to make this entry. It is hyper detailed to the point of exhaustion. I don't know if, if people like all these stats. I personally love these stats. I think it is so freaking cool. If you know anything about me, I love tracking my time for everything. I love tracking my streaks. I love knowing how often I do something. I love knowing how often I am writing somewhere or how long it takes me to do something. I love that kind of data. Now, one of the most powerful features of this entire app is the ability to add tags. Okay. So you can make a tag that transcends all your journals. Um, and let's say you can make tags for people, tags for places, tags for ideas, tags for themes, tags for um, activities, right? And if you do that certain activity, you meet those certain people, you can tag it within these journals. And if you mention, okay, that person or that tag, or you just automatically type the tag here in the tag section, you're going to get a list of all of your tags, all of the journal entries that you have with that tag in it. So the organizational capability of this app is like mint okay it is top tier stuff you're going to be noticing like you're going to be able to find anything everywhere and it's not going to get lost and it's one of the things that i appreciate the most about this because i can absolutely see how something like this could become overwhelming if it didn't have a great way to navigate the app and in terms of navigating the app in general right um 
The UI is designed beautifully, okay? This is one of those apps that I genuinely believe you can introduce to anybody and they'd be able to navigate it with almost zero problems. It's not like it has a bunch of hidden menus. It's not like it has a bunch of hidden features. Most of the features are explicit and easy to use. So to give you an idea of some of the features that are found in it and are easy to use, right? Click on the settings, boom, I am a premium member and we'll get to the pricing in a second. I'm a premium member and I'm syncing up all my journals, but here, okay, you can find a bunch of little features that day one includes in their app to kind of promote the whole journaling thing, right? So you're going to find templates and you're going to find daily prompts. Okay. Click on the daily prompts. You can actually get these daily prompts sent to your phone as a notification. If you're trying to build that habit of like journaling every day, don't necessarily know what you want to be writing about. These daily prompts are really, really helpful. They're really, really cool and very, have you reflect very nicely on what's going on in your life, okay? If you don't know what to write about, you can click on one of these daily prompts, see what movies did you need to watch? That's today's daily prompt, boom, answer it, and you wrote for the day, you journaled for the day, okay? The templates are also very useful. If you wanna create your own template, you can do that. Some kind of template if you have, if you've set up some kind of morning or afternoon routine, um, you can set up a template of like, you know, three highlights of the day, what I learned today, who I talked to, the, and then have like a little section for, you know, your journaling and what you did for the day. Um, there's daily gratitude, there's daily plan, your daily self-reflection, then there's a five minute in the AM, five minute in the PM. And these are all kind of logs that are already included inside of the day one app. So if you didn't want to necessarily create your own template, you have these, the template gallery that you have access to. I think the really cool thing about the app is that you get to create your own template. You're not necessarily stuck with the templates that they give you. Same thing with like Notion, I kind of think of, like the Notion template gallery, 10 out of 10, highly recommend. But it's, a lot, it's really helpful. It's really helpful because the best way that I could explain that I use this app and, and the difference between having a digital journal and an analog journal the way I use the app, the way I use digital journaling in general, it, it's very free flowing, right? Like I'm not reflecting too much on what I'm saying. I'm just like going, I'm just typing away exactly what I'm thinking because the difference between digital and analog is that I could actually type a lot faster than I can write. So I don't have to spend as much time reflecting, picking my words as carefully as I would if I'm writing because it's a lot more exhausting. So my journal entries in my digital journal are a lot more in depth, a lot more rambly and a lot more information, right? That I keep in. Um, but that that's one of the benefits of digital journaling. It's fast. It's easy. It's pick up and go wherever you are with any device that you have. You can't necessarily do that with your analog journals. So I think that's how I use digital, digital journaling the most. It's kind of just like no gates, you know, just free flowing, whatever comes to my mind, I put down on into the entry, right? So you have the on this day, which is a very, very, very cool app um, feature because on this day, if you are using a journal for multiple um, years, hopefully it, be, it develops into a habit that you can use for multiple years. I mean, I've seen somebody who has a streak online of like over a thousand days and it is insane. On this day feature kind of shows you what you did this day a year ago or two years ago and it shows you the highlights and you can go back and revisit and I think it's a really cool feature because it kind of prompts you to look back at your entries. Then you have the appearance where I said you can have um, different fonts, okay? So you can pick from a plethora of fonts or if you downloaded your own custom fonts, you can do that through this. You can do the font sizes. You can have your custom font sizes. So for somebody who, you know, has shitty vision, okay, no offense, um, you can increase the size of the font so you can see it a little bit better. You have the expanded URLs and then the auto title first line, which is what I have when the first line of your entry is automatically going to be the title, right? Now, you have the import and export feature, okay? Now, the, one of the, the biggest complaints that I hear about um, like digital journaling in general is the fact that people are afraid they're going to lose 
a lot of their stuff, right? Like if something were to happen to the app, the app becomes discontinued, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're afraid that they're going to lose all those entries. And don't get me wrong, that's still a very valid like fear that we can have in today's day and age. But I feel like day one does a really good job of giving you a plethora of options for you to be able to store them elsewhere, right? And one of those, one of the first options that they give you is the, the ability to export them as PDFs or HTML or even like an Excel format. You can export them and store them somewhere else, somewhere safe, um, outside of the grasp of the app itself, right? So like if you want to download all of your entries as you know, PDFs, and then you want to keep it in a folder on your computer or keep it in the Google Drive or put it on a little hard drive. You can totally do that without a problem. It's hassleless. It's not difficult to do. But one of my favorite things that this app allows you to do is it allows you to print a book. Okay. It allows you to print a book of your entire, like all of your entries to have a physical journal. Okay, a physical journal of all of your entries. All right, that's crazy. Tell me that's not crazy, okay? I know I sound like a fangirl, okay? But this is one of my favorite apps and I'm really hoping that you guys give it a try because it is the feature set really is amazing. But to give you an idea, okay, they do charge obviously for the books, okay? To give you uh, an idea of the pricing, let's say you journal once a day for an entire year, you wanna print out 375 colored pages. That comes out to about, $53, $54 for an entire year's worth of journaling. If you journaled every day, if you want to do 50 like colored pages, it's like $14.99. It's not that bad. You could have it in a hard cover or a soft cover. It comes with all of your metadata. So like where you journaled comes with a map, the amount of entries you can pick your cover page. It is a really, really, really neat feature. And unfortunately, I haven't used the app enough to be able to print my book, but you best believe that when I do, at the end of this year, print my book, I will show you guys exactly how it turned out because I'm very excited about it. I think that is such a cool way to bridge that gap between the digital and the analog journaling because you get to hold it. Like you, you have it, you have it. It counts like a real journal. It is a real, real journal. Oh boy. Yeah, it's a real journal, you know, and I think that is such a cool, cool, like opportunity to, to just automatically have everything printed out. Obviously, you know, if you have explicit things and, you know, you don't want to really share it, you can individually pick what entries you want if you don't want certain entries to be included in your book. But you get all of these options when you're printing your book, which is really, really cool. Now we move on we're still going through all the settings okay and this is just bringing in more like discussion okay so we have the passcode and the face id so like the biometrics now having a digital journal what comes with that this you know having a journal in general one of the most important things about having that journal is security okay if it's a place where we're putting our deepest and darkest and most intimate thoughts um, into, you don't really want it to be accessible to anybody and everybody, right? That's just one of those things. And I guess the way we mitigate that with physical journals would be like hiding them or taking them with us or having it on our person, but that's not necessarily true for all of our electronic devices. So they have passwords. They have security for you to be able to protect your entries. And on iPhone, for example, the security that they have is either face ID or a passcode. So every time you log out of the app, if you click on it again, you need the face ID to be able to log back in. I think that's something that should be, you know, should be included in all apps. Honestly, it's some kind of security, some kind of protection. And the fact that this includes it, it's like, okay, they're taking, they're taking me seriously. <laughs> they're taking my feelings seriously. And I really appreciate that. Every time I think of the passcode or the face ID, I think of like that dollar store, like journal that had the little key in it where you would just pop it open, you know, you'd be, and I never realized how easy it really was to just like kind of just Jimmy the lock. I thought that was the most secure journal in the world. I'm telling you. Anyway, <laughs> um, so you have the importing, like I said, you have the book printing, a little app icon, you can pick your colors, okay, of how you want your app to look, or even if you want to hide it a little bit. So if you don't want people to know that you're using day one, or you don't want people to know where you're putting your most secret, super villain, dark thoughts, 
um, you can hide it, all right? And nobody's gonna know that's day one. Look at that. Would you know? No, you wouldn't know unless you knew. So, you know, unless you knew what you knew after you didn't know, then did you really know what you knew? Exactly. <laughs> um, so then you have your location history and another feature that I think is also very interesting day one is that it has social media app integration. So you go to your Instagram, you can connect your Instagram account and you can have all of your content, like your journals, your videos, even hashtags be imported into your data entry. So that way they can kind of match up, right? Um, they even, you can even keep track of your likes, like your like counts. They have the Apple health, which is how you would track your steps and like your, um, your, your health in general, <laughs> like <laughs> your activity for the day. So after seeing all those settings, let me give you an idea. Here's like the media timeline. So click on the media timeline in the lower tab. You're going to see all the photos, videos, and, um, like audio that you would include in all of your journals your map so all the places oh well i can't show you the map but the map will show you all the places from where you've journaled from your calendar so it'll show you exactly how many entries you made on that day where from so if you need to look for a specific day you can find that on your calendar but most of the time you're going to be using the timeline view in my opinion right now one of the really neat features that I've really enjoyed about this app that I used to do using this, I used to use my Zoom H1, okay? Um, little recorder with my little bundle top. I used to keep a, an audio log of my day um, because I thought it would be the best way to have the most non-filtered version of my thoughts, all right? In, in audio format and I, I have no way to edit it, right? So this it would just be like me talking to my future self via an audio interface, but you can do that now. So here we are and we're going to record our first audio um, message into the app because we are going to show off how cool this uh, t speech to text functionality really is. Boom, let me stop it. So here we are, and we're going to record our first audio message into that because we're going to show off how cool this at speech to text functionality really is. Listen, it's like 95% great, okay? Like if you knew what you were going to say, see how it even like redacted the um? I said um in that, and it didn't even include it. That's 10 out of 10. The really cool feature about this is, is not only does it bring it from speech to text, it keeps the original now. So here we are and we're going to record. It keeps the original like audio. And I thought that was so sick. So there are a lot of moments in my day where I have a few thoughts and I'll go in and I'll just record the audio and keep that audio snippet. But I have it in text form if I ever want to export it. And I just thought that was mm, so clutch. I thought that was so cool because sometimes there are, you know, there are places and things that it's just not appropriate to take out your phone and start journaling, right? <laughs> or like to take out your full laptop or you just don't have the time. And sometimes I'll be driving in the car and I'll be hit with a, an idea, a million dollar idea. Like, yeah, what if bridges could disconnect and rotate while flying in a jet? You know, like the million dollar ideas just come when you're driving sometimes and you don't really know. So sometimes I'll just take this, use the audio and be like, all right, so if the bridge did this, da, 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 but da, 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 you know, you know what I'm saying? It's pretty great. It's pretty great. I really appreciate that functionality. Uh, then obviously you just have the regular text. So you click on the text, boom, you are going to be typing away. Now let's click a picture. Let's go uh, here to this Pikachu picture. Boom. And this is a Pikachu picture. Yes. Wow. Such picture. And that's how you would include pictures. Easy. So <laughs> that is my walkthrough of how the app works in general. Like I said, you could find this app on iOS, on your MacBook, on your iPad, on Android, using a web version of day one and even on your watch you have a version of this on your watch so you can create an entry on your apple watch just wanted to make a note of that there are a lot of great things about this app a lot of great things but i want to be very upfront with you guys there is a premium version of this app 
like most things, there is a subscription-based service, and that is what gives you access to almost 90% of this app, okay? Without the day one premium app, you are limited to one journal, you are limited to one picture per entry, and you are limited to one device. So with the pro feature, you can obviously sync across devices. You, I can go f like pick it up from my iPad after dribbling on my iPhone very quickly, very easily, almost seamlessly the speed at which this syncs at, but without paying that premium, um, you're not going to get those, those, uh, those features. So it is $35 a year. Okay, you're going to be paying $35 a year for the day one premium or $3.99 a month, which isn't too bad. Okay, for the amount of things that this app does, I've never had a problem with having subscription services for, for apps and, um, and programs that keep updating their features. Like they need to make their money somehow. And I understand that completely. And day one is one of those apps that they're constantly innovating in this whole journaling space. Okay, they're constantly making new features. They're constantly updating the app. They keep it bug free. The design is beautiful. Okay, there's so many good things about this app that I absolutely think it warrants the subscription. I think having ongoing support for a company that's actively caring about their user base and the way they use their app is very important. And I'm okay with it. I think $3.99 is more than reasonable. So that is a little disclaimer and something that I, I definitely want you guys to know, right, um, about the app and its usage. Now, what do I think about this app? Well, if you didn't know, <laughs> if it's not obvious yet, I think this is the best journaling app that's out right now. Without without a like doubt in my mind, I don't think there's another app that compares um, that does something like so well. Okay, it does one thing and does it very well. Okay, this isn't the app that's trying to compete with Evernote. That's trying to complete compete with OneNote or Notion. It's not. It's not what it's here for. This app is meant for your journal. Your journaling. All right. This app is meant for you to be your journal, your digital journal in every way, shape or form. And I think the way they have gone about that, um, they have succeeded and spectacularly. OK, and it sounds like it sounds like I am dick riding this app, but that's because I might be. All right. I think it's an app that you have to have if you are starting to take your digital journaling more seriously. And this is just for people who don't want to really have the um this is for I think this is for people who don't necessarily need the creative aspect of journaling to really, you know, feel their fulfillment when it comes to journaling. This is for people who want something that is low effort, that is fast, that is secure. OK, this is for the people who are on the go or people who have that who want that gap bridged between their digital and physical journaling habits and organization systems. I think this is what that app is for, right? And I think it fills that space like mint 10 out of 10. Um, but there's a lot of pros. Okay. There's mostly pros to this app. So let's go over some of the pros. So low effort, unlimited devices. Okay. Unlimited devices and unlimited photos. Um, easy easy to use usability anybody could use it it's not hard everything is very self-explanatory no hidden features there is social media integration there it's, it's a beautiful ai or a beautiful ui very beautiful ui the ability to export the physical memory books um the the fact that it has templates and daily prompts there's offline use so you don't always need to be connected if you want to make your dirtle entry you always have access to your information um, and the very, very detailed tags and metadata that is found in this app. I just love stats. I fucking love stats. They're 10 out of 10. It's beautiful. I love seeing that stuff. You might not, and you can deactivate a good portion of them. I love it. I think it's amazing. Um, the cons, it's cost. Okay. The cost, not, not everybody wants to pay a subscription for a journaling app. That's perfectly okay. Completely understandable. Like, like I said, I think this is definitely one of those apps that's worth it. Um, if you want to take this very seriously, but I understand that it's not again, uh, this is an app. So there's always that risk that apps have. So you could have data corruption. 
okay you can have loss of data you can have some kind of security breach these are all things that you have to take into consideration when putting down all of your information into an app all right in general though i can't i can't find things that i didn't like about it i'm gonna be honest i i didn't i couldn't find things that i didn't enjoy about this app all right well that is um my walkthrough and my review of the day one journaling app i think if you don't have it it's something you should absolutely have immediately i think it's something you should totally use i am not sponsored by day one at all this is just my personal experience and i think it's something everybody should experience so if you like this video uh, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment down below, and let me know if you use this app or if you do use digital journals, what app you use the most, like what app would you think is better than day, the day one journal or what app do you think compares to it? Let me know down in the comments because I'm really interested and I do want to try out a lot more different apps when it comes to journaling. So I think it would be a great discussion, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you try this app out and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.